Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to the third monthly development update live stream for Scars of Honor. Welcome once again to the Beast Burst Dungeon. And uh, today I have with me, of course, as always, Venelin. Hello. Hello. Our glorious leader, our chief, our creative director, and for the first time, all the way. From Italy, it is our colleague Francesco Abonitio, who we call Abo. You can call him Abo as well. Hello. Hello there. It's very nice to finally have you on stream, sir. It's been, I've been waiting for this moment. I, I love this guy, guys. Uh, we all do. We all, we, do. <laughs> we all love Abo. And we're going to have an amazing stream today, I hope. Thank you to everyone uh, that's tuned in. Uh, and as always, let me start with a couple of uh, casual, casual announcements. This is episode three. So if you've missed any of our previous, uh, basically our two previous development uh, updates, you can catch them on our YouTube channel. The recording of this third one will also be available tomorrow at the latest in uh, our YouTube channel. We're currently cross streaming live to Twitch, to our official Facebook page and to uh, our official YouTube channel as well. So welcome to everyone who are tuning in, uh, not in Twitch, but in YouTube and in Facebook. <clears throat> uh, before I get into some more announcements, I'll let my wonderful guests uh, do a quick introduction. Uh, let's start with Venny real quick. You've Hello. seen him on the past uh, couple of streams, but for those of you who haven't, a few words, sir. Hello, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you again. My name is Venelin and I'm CEO here at Beast Burst Entertainment and I am taking care that everything runs smoothly and we make a cool game. All right. And how about you, Mr. Abo? Could you introduce yourself? Of course. Uh, nice to meet you all for the first time. I'm Francesco. Uh, everyone calls me Abbo. I'm the art director here and uh, of course, uh, aside from the pretty graphics, uh, I also helping uh, uh, with the technical aspect of the game, making yes. sure the game won't melt any graphic card, so <laughs> that would be a And plus. it's also pretty. Yes, while <laughs> being very pretty for everyone. And yeah, that's me in a nutshell right now. Yeah, we're, I'm going to bug you to, to tell us a little bit more about your previous experience because we have a heavy hitter here. Abo has worked on some of uh, some of, some very, very big IPs that you guys have probably heard of, but I'll let him uh, talk about that if he feels comfortable too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your experience then, because I think that's a, that's a really good good thing to hit on. Yeah, uh, so um, before joining Beast Burst, I did a lot of stuff. I've been working in the game industry for uh, over 13 years, but I, I generally don't remember the exact <laughs> amount because I'm getting old. Uh, we all do. We all do. Uh, notable experiences. Uh, I had the pleasure of working uh, with CD Projekt Red on uh, Cyberpunk 2077 as a uh, um, technical artist. Are so, we making cyberpunk graphics on mobile? Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> on Unity especially, it's going to be <laughs> rad. It's going to be fun. It's going to be totally rad. And also, I had the chance of working in Ubisoft uh, on Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yes, that game is actually still ongoing. It, would com it will come out at some point. Uh, I have no idea when, but it will come out at some point. <laughs> And let's say these are the two notable ones. Let's not go too long over... <laughs> In full details. Yeah, the, exactly. It's only one stream. Yeah, Abo is a gaming rock star. We see Puffy and chat. And, and speaking of Puffy and chat, I want to shout out our entire team behind the scenes because all you guys see is our beautiful three faces over here. But we have the entire marketing team over here. So uh, shout out to Ciro, to Veli, and uh, to your uh, favorite Puffy Muffins, July, our Yuli, basically, in Bulgarian, our... Our marketing team. We have the production team here. We have Kalayan on the on the production. We have uh, Steph on the cameras, and we have Lubo uh, on the audio. As you see, by the way, we now we're not having these clunky, huge microphones that we had on episode one and two. We're all cabled up, so now we can kind of finally. bang. It. Yeah, we can kind of bang on the table a little yes, bit without. Yes, finally, drum roll. We can do that. Uh... <laughs> yes, and uh, of course, uh, Svillin, uh, our our the the other half of our. Uh, of our two-headed ogre lead is also here supporting us. Uh, he got us uh, dinner, <laughs> so we're well fed. We're well watered with our branded mugs. Absolutely. Slurp, slurp. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's. I mean, the the atmosphere here is really good. So big love and and big thanks to to the entire team who are supporting her us here for this stream. So it's very important to note that today we're not coming empty-handed. We have uh, made sure to. 
uh, get you guys something in return for, for, your, for your loyalty and for, for you tuning in to our stream once again for another month. So we are giving away four mounts, four very exclusive and special mounts that we're going to show them, actually five. There's uh, the dual corn, so if we can uh, pull, uh, pull that a up. A sneak peek. A sneak peek. So four of you lucky individuals will receive one of these beautiful duo corns. Just look at it. Beautiful. Um, the way to enter the giveaway is um, you will type in exclamation point giveaway into the Twitch chat. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, if Facebook and YouTube viewers you should come over to Twitch, register. If you haven't registered, come into chat, just type in exclamation point giveaway at any time during the stream and you will be entered into the drawing. <clears throat> also, one, the luckiest one of the five winners will get this amazing King's Valiant Hound. Now, who's a good boy? Who's a good doggo, <laughs> doggo, doggo? <laughs> this, the King's Valiant Hound is the good doggo. So yeah, guys, one of you, we're gonna be drawing this one last at the end of the stream, and we're gonna be drawing the other, uh, the four dual corns periodically. So uh, come into Twitch, register, and get onto the giveaway as quickly as possible. And try to beat Puffy Muffins with his like 100 accounts trying to get this. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's made like 20 Smurf <laughs> accounts. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, the way you will claim it is make sure your Twitch DMs are opened and uh, Puffy Muffins will contact you via private message so you can arrange uh, the getting of your code or however that's going to get to you or we'll arrange it. So yeah, make sure to, to uh, enable to, to unlock your, your PMs so you can private message, get private message by Puffy Muffins or you message Puffy Muffins or you message the account, write us an email, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure to get in touch. So uh, let's get back into the full camera and... Uh, Talk a little bit about uh, what else is going on. Like it's been, it's been uh, a busy month over here. There's, uh, as always, the team is expanding. We're getting a bunch new, a bunch of more colleagues. We're also hiring, so stay on the lookout in, uh, in the career section on our website. Uh, also, I already said it, but we're multi-streaming on Twitch, on Facebook, and on YouTube. So, yeah, those are pretty much our announcements. Our numbers are going up. So yeah, if you want to help us, of course, follow us on our social media. You can see it at the bottom of the screen. Uh, join our Discord channel. There's always snippets of, of extra behind the scenes information, some screenshots. Absolutely. Sometimes Venny decides to be in like a more giving uh, and spoilery mood and just drops a huge nuke in the Discord Absolutely. sometimes. So uh, those are those Just are be there if you want to, to see something. <laughs> those are always fun days when he drops a nuke in Discord. But uh, I will make something cool. I'm just taking it and I'm like silently going in Discord and I'm just putting it there and just observing what is happening. Speaking of taking, I think I need to grab this mug and yes. bring it home as instructed by no. our <laughs> our fans. We should do that. We should yeah. all, always answer our fans. Yeah, we have you guys uh, all three chats. So we have a multi chat here uh, right across from us. So we're reading everything you guys are saying in Twitch in YouTube and in Facebook. So feel free to shoot us any questions. Our marketing team is uh, very carefully and meticulously combing through uh, everything that you write and they're gonna put it up on the teleprompter. If they notice something live coming in is a very good question, they will uh, kind of prompt us and try to try to make us answer it. So yeah, um, keep shooting your questions uh, in chat. But as you know, uh, a couple of weeks or like a week before the stream, we also do a forum thread. So if you want to make sure that you have put your questions in beforehand, you can post those in the monthly thread for questions. That's a much bigger chance to get those answered if they're good. Shout out to one user who put in like 90 questions in <laughs> one post. Oh, yes. We had a user put in like he separated them out in sections and in like nine sections with like 10 questions each. Shout out, bro, but we're not going to be able to answer 90 questions. But we were considering taking his post and just making like his a, own stream, like, like, a, like a two hour YouTube questions and answers video, just going through the 90 questions this person asked, bro. Hearts for you. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And questions are starting to come in. Can we play the game in German? Yada, yada. We'll, we'll get to those in the Q&A section. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that can already be confirmed. All right. That one got in quick. <laughs> Uh, good thing for me and Vinny, we're probably going to be resting yes. and drinking water for like most of this stream. Just stay aside and be pretty and that's I, it. I have the feeling this is going to be a lot of talking on my side yes. today. Do you yes, have enough sir. water? Yeah, you're yes. going to need refills for yes. that. Uh, today's, uh, like we're totally jumping on the opportunity because as we said, we're in Bulgaria right now. Um, 
Abo is here uh, from Italy, and uh, we don't know when he's going to be here next. So we're going to he will him. he we're will gonna squeeze I'm him dry. He will. <laughs> yeah, he'll surely be back soon. But now that we have him here, we're going to focus uh, uh, a lot uh, of this stream on art and on the stuff that he's been working on, the insight he can give you guys. And besides, he's just such a larger than life personality. I love listening to him talk and, and get excited about the stuff. Let's see if uh, our people agree. We will see. Time will tell. So, uh, we can move on to the uh, progress update. So, if you can pop on yeah, the Yeah, I slide. would uh, preface, this is actually our first uh, themed uh, stream. Yeah. Because today we're going to talk specifically about, about one macro argument. It's going to be about Iron Garth, the Western Frontier. And this is the first time we actually name drop one of the continents of uh, the game. One of the playable areas of the game. At some point, we will show the entire world map but it's not yet the day. Absolutely. Let us begin with the first continent, however. Let's start looking at the first map. Uh, if we can put up the picture, we can start dissecting some of these juicy details. Um, so, Iron Garth, what it is? Uh, this is the starting continent for the humans, the elves, and the undead. As you, if you have followed our previous uh, streams we have already spoken a bit about the humans and a bit about the undead but why they are focusing on this continent so iron guard small lower dump today uh, is the used to be the continent of the twin baronies because formerly the undead used to be humans until they said you know screw mortality <laughs> we, we can don't do need much it. much better um and of course things went quite south after that yeah, uh, they're still duking it out. Uh, Can you just point to, just for a second how many iterations we did, like how many times we changed the world until we find out like this is the perfect scenario that we want to dig in. You personally went and like several times revisited the art, like the 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 style guide, if, if you will, for for the undeads. And it was time consuming, but yeah, this is off. this is a very good question. So. Uh, of course, the objective was to make sure that uh, you guys uh, love and remember the races uh, as they are for in Scars of Honor, yeah. not uh, as you know the discount version of other races for <laughs> other games. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the iteration has been lengthy. I also need to shout out Elena and the rest of the writing team, which have been working tirelessly yeah. to also accommodate our crazy demands when we were like. Oh, but what Screw if... Screw that, let's go different. But what if we do this instead of that? But what if we add nuance, etc., uh, etc.? Cetera, et cetera. And actually, nuance is the correct word because the plot uh, is uh, highly structured around the fact there's no objective good guys and objective bad oh, guys. Yeah. Um, and it's very hard to do, by the way, if you want to tell a story and like you want to uh, give it in a way that you don't want to say you're good, you're bad. Yes. It is way harder than... It just is pointing. absolutely, absolutely complicated because, of course, the first temptation would be to just make, uh, you know, the good, good versus bad, uh, yeah. light versus darkness. The easiest way. Exactly. But we decided to, I mean, since you're going to live in this world and immerse yourself in this world, this world should be uh, believable, which doesn't yeah. mean uh, uh, realistic, but believable still should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, a good way to do that is to give uh, depth and character to every race. That's why uh, the humans, the undead, and every other race we've been working on have been completely facelifted. I mean, Absolutely. the undead could use some more facelifting. They are rotting away. <laughs> Not but, only that. <laughs> um, but you, you, at the end... You took great care for, of them. Yes, I really wanted... You, the thing is, the undead usually are relegated either to the zombie or to the, uh, you know, uh, darker guys. This oh, is no how one they were portrayed me. in so many games. Yes. So you're, no you, one when, you, when you came here, you said, look, Benavin, I'm sick of that. Yes. I just want to make something different, especially with the undead. I'm starting first with them. Let me do something. And you did something amazing. Thank you very much. And I hope, I, I mean, last time I saw some interesting reactions in the chat. So people seem to be digging the current yeah. undead iteration. Um, we're going to make those fans happy today, perhaps. We have some more to talk about. But let's talk, uh, before going on the races, mm -hmm. let's talk first about the kingdoms. Uh, very, very high level. Yeah. So right now you can see here three cities. These are actually the three capital cities that you will find in Iron Garth. One is White Song, which is the capital city of the humans. One is, as announced previously, Velteras, the capital city of the undead. And a new name drop here, <laughs> but uh, we're a bit more secretive on this one, is Astralumina, which go is going to be 
the capital city of the elves. Um, My favorite race. You've seen, well, you, you know already, but the elves also got a massive facelift. Yeah. And uh, let's are we going see. to show this? Let's see. Okay. Let's. So proceed. stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned because you are going to see something very, very cool. So, um, and absolutely, and these three kingdoms uh, are duking it out. Of course, the elves and the humans are more akin, and they, their objectives for now are more aligned. And uh, the undead, of course, uh, uh, are a bit uh, on the aggressive side as they want to make a point, and therefore. Uh, each race starts. Uh, each race starts with two uh, starting region. Has mm -hmm. two starting regions, which will be mostly dominated by their own faction. But we also have in the center of the continent a region called Ondal's Fall, oh. and who's been following closely may capture some of this name. Uh, Ondal's Fall is going to be our first contested area. Yeah. But let's not just talk about it. Let's go a bit more in depth with some visual stuff. So let's begin from the human starting zone, Bravestone Cliff. You may have seen these before. Uh, we may have shown these before. I don't remember if that's. I think this particular image. Yeah, I, th I think we. Yes, found this, this may be the second time we show, <coughs> but today we add context to it. Mm -hmm. So this is the um, this is the illustration and first draft of uh, Bravestone Cliff. So and what, the mood in the area. Yes, and the mood in the area. These uh, uh, artworks you're gonna see are essential for us to capture the feeling that each area should have. So every time yeah. we start working on a region. Uh, now it's imperative to... Uh, Can you explain a bit how the whole procedure... Uh, because we have a lot of uh, like viewers here who uh, really admires the end product, but can you just briefly say how many phases you do before you say, okay, this is it, this is what we show to the players. Absolutely. How you start and how you end. So, um, the first point usually is to understand the lore, the narrative element. Uh, if there's no lore, if there's no theme to the area, we're just going random, we're just going blind. Yeah. Uh, after that, we actually uh, do um, reference searching and mood boarding. So we find what we can take from the real world, uh, from inspiration, it comes from architecture, understanding the flora, uh, the fauna for the creatures. Mm -hmm. Even, of course, some people that are particularly invested in it uh, may even go uh, and research, you know, rock formations. Not everybody <laughs> does that, but some people go uh, really deep into that <laughs> um, but yeah absolutely and uh, then we do uh, mood boards mood boards it the core the core the core point of each zone is to nail down the color palette so understanding which are going to be the dominant colors. can we say this is some sort of a mood palette yes exactly this is the culmination of everything so mm -hmm. we take the reference from architecture the reference from the flora and again rock formations and we take the, the color palette and we combine it together to get to uh, a visual objective okay. of everything. And uh, while you have seen this, Braystone Cliff, and uh, to just add some more context of lore, this is going to be where the humans start. It's a, a more Mediterranean-inspired area, so mm -hmm. imagine uh, more summer-like atmosphere, cicadas. This is going to be quite, uh, uh, quite, uh, actually quite sunny, uh, but we go about talking about sun and other yeah. things later. Um, but yeah, this is going to be your first outing if you start playing as a human. Uh, let's uh, uh, take a look, however, as you continue leveling in the next area of the humans, which is uh, uh, Primrose Fields. Ooh, ooh, this looks nice, Abo. Well, shout out to our uh, 2D team. By the way, the art team, like, I joined this team and the, the, these guys on steroids, like they are so good. Like this, this is a great team, absolutely. And... Uh, Without with the, with the, without this great team, we wouldn't get these great images. Absolutely. This yeah, absolute... absolutely. I'm ending up with a new desktop wallpaper every month. Like, Avo brings me a new wallpaper for my desktop every month. And this is just amazing. This is my new... Guys, officially, until the next live stream, this is going to be my you wallpaper. Know, you know what is one cool perk to be, uh, like, in, in, in this company? Because when I see something cool and I just go to the person who draw it and I can go like, can you make it this ultra wide so I can put it on my monitor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and we should actually. And they, they never refuse to me, you know. We should. It's, well, it's really, it's do really they cool. dare? <laughs> Would they dare refuse the big man? <laughs> but uh, so what is Primrose Field? Primrose Field is the heartland of the human kingdom uh, and it's uh, the source of main food. So it's a very bucolic landscape full of uh, uh, farmlands. However, this bucolic soil. Uh, uh, yes, Rich, with yeah. great soil, and uh, however, this bucolic land, landmark has a stark reminder of what's behind it, and we all see we see this massive wall mm. looming over 
uh, the Serene uh, Hills. Uh, this wall is nothing else but Ondal's Gate, which is uh, one of the last fortifications that held back against the Undead Tide back in the war. I, I wonder where else have we seen a great wall like keeping away from, it is, it is, from a lot of undead. It's not a real fantasy game if you don't put a, a massive wall, yeah, fortress yeah. wall. Um, or somebody chasing for a ring here and there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the, fant the, the cool thing about the fantasy tropes is not avoiding them, it's the execution. Yeah, if you execute absolutely. them properly, it's always going to be uh, good to have. In this case, we play on the contrast, the bucolic landscape and the no, big... it's absolutely um, monumental the way it's like portrayed that you can say this, like uh, uh, converted into 3D with your like super talented hands. Well, this would be this would be something to, to see. I, by the way, uh, there's a reference to I think it's uh, uh, Dragon Prince. A shout out to the Dragon Prince reference. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, and this and this region, uh, which will serve as uh, again playing on this contrast, is also uh, the other region which will surround our beautiful capital city. Mm -hmm. Uh, White Song City, uh, we spoke, we mentioned this before in name only. It's the last great bastion of uh, mankind after the other twin bar barony decided to go all uh, Necronomicon on themselves. And uh, well, it's no longer human. <laughs> so um, let's take a look for the first time at White Song City uh, a bit more close up. Uh, White Song City Ooh. is uh, an island. Uh, you would, uh, in a real world uh, parallel would be Bon Saint Michel. Mm -hmm. So this uh, uh, island connected only by bridges to the main uh, to the main landscape, and it's a port town. The un the, the humans here are uh, seafaring people. They manage to trade to live off the sea and uh, to um, create a sort of relationship with uh, the um, harsh coastline. And White Song the White Song City is testament to that. Not only is an imposing bastion, but it's also a thriving port city with a a lot of merchants and uh, a lot of uh, traffic of uh, ships. Absolutely, and it's quite important to say that this is just one mood, like this is just one angle to look at the city. This is not like the whole city that is like, th that's it. This is just one angle that, exactly. that, that shows you. In the last stream, we have seen a mood shot of the bridge, actually. Did we show yes, it? Yes, we showed... Um, uh, this is my... Uh, I love this, I love this spot. You yes. know, you know like, we had, we had I, a, a special like discussion, me and Abu, on, on the bridge, what should we do, how should we do it. And this is very cool, guys, because when you see uh, a lot of different opinions, should we try this, should we try that, and you see a lot of different variants, and then you say, okay, let's do this, let's do that. And when you combine them, they become like something uh, complete and very, very, very cool. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys, you better appreciate that each image is like, 10 images <laughs> behind the scenes like at one, least yeah one is equal to 10 at least usually there's a lot going on Abel, can you tell me a little bit about this amazing outcropping there in the background which kind of looks like a bird silhouette ah oh so you get it you got into you get into the point so well white song city it's uh, not named uh, as such uh, for uh, you know random reasons mm -hmm. it's actually because there is this massive sculpture which actually ha um doubles as an harmonica this uh, big uh, stone um, this, big, this big stone uh, monument. Grif uh, yeah. mo griffin monumental griffin yeah. it's actually oh, not only the symbol of the city but it's also uh, carved in a way that where the sea breeze um, flows through it a melody is actually played and that's why this um, the city is called white song guys this was not pre-rehearsed I, I wasn't like setting him up to say this really cool stuff it, i actually didn't know i just popped uh, popped up to me this is news to me but yeah i love i love the fact that you guys have done all those extra steps into the world building absolutely and just made it amazing and but captivating the cool thing about this team is that i i have the pleasure to say that the team is proactive everyone proposes idea Actually, the, um, the windpipe thing, it came out from one of our concept artists that uh, said, yeah, let's, let me sketch it. Let's see yeah. what happens. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Let's, let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, it is unique and it is like on the spot. Yes. And this is one thing that it's not taken from granted because a lot of people may just go through the motion. But here we have a team that really cares about the product. And I'm very happy to say that. Uh, the, the people actually believe in the project and they're passionate about it. And this is what lets us, you know, come up with, uh, with those ideas and yeah. bring them to the table. By the way, before continuing, 
who wants some undead previews? Hold up. Hold up. Let's <laughs> let's pull a little breather before that because I don't want to just uh, shoot through this. Let's uh, get back to the full screen. Uh, let me do a little reminder and let you catch yeah, your breath sure. real quick. All right. Actually, let me uh, because uh, I assume new people have come in. Guys, again, we're doing a giveaway. We're giving away uh, five mounts in total. So go ahead and, and uh, enter the giveaway by uh, typing exclamation point giveaway in uh, the Twitch chat. That is available only for the viewers on Twitch. So if you're on Facebook or on YouTube, hop over to Twitch. Uh, and uh, I think we should do the first drawing. Let's uh, just go ahead and draw the first uh, duo corn. So if Puppy Muffins is ready on that magical button in Twitch chat, you should be able to see who the first winner is. Oh, let's see. So let's uh, see. Hopefully it works, hopefully it works. <laughs> yeah, this is the, yeah, you know, the, the risks of live production. Maybe it won't work. Maybe a brick will fall out of the out of the wall and... Oh, Cozy Chicken. Over the... Congratulations to Cozy Chicken. Cozy Chicken, you are the first winner in today's giveaways. Guys, there will be four more. Congrats, congrats to Cozy Chicken. Cozy. Uh, please enable your private messages if they're blocked on Twitch so that Puffy Muffins can contact you or you through your Cozy Chicken account. Write a PM to Puffy Muffins or to the official Scars of Honor. Congrats, congrats. Congrats, Cozy Chicken. So, Cozy Chicken gets one of our four duo corn mounts. And so, there's three duo corns remaining. And at the end of the stream, we're going to do the King's Valiant mount. And again, I'm using the opportunity to thank everyone for tuning in, uh, be it on Twitch, be it on Facebook, be it on YouTube. Everyone in the Discord, everyone typing in Reddit, everyone that's uh, uh, submitting your questions into the forum thread on our website, and everyone coming in from different channels, including uh, the people that uh, came through, through my page and, and through everyone's page here who posted on their personals. Thank you, thank you, friends, for supporting this project. And I think it's uh, not just a matter of support. I think what we're showing here just shows the, the level of commitment and professionalism uh, and, and passion that everyone here has. Yeah. So I'm so proud to be here. So anyways, let's get back to it. We're going to do another quick intermission like that uh, after the next segment. And we're going to draw another one. But let's give it back to Abu. He was saying something about our favorite undead here. Yes, I want to hear from the chat, though. Like, let me, let me, let me see the enthusiasm for the undead. If you want to see stuff, if you don't, ah, they're like so focused on the giveaway. So right yeah, they're now. focused on the giveaway. <laughs> mm, uh, well, we have one. I think it's it could be. Uh, we can take the purple heart uh, yeah. sign to proceed. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead with the undead then. Undead on a unicorn day one. So today <laughs> we're showing us, uh, we're showing everyone. Veltaras. Oh. Uh, this is a mood shot from the Undead Capital. It used to be a much cheerier place before they uh, decided to ascend and use their magic uh, to uh, become immortal. Unfortunately, their magic has also had the side effect of starting to wither and kill the land on which they reside. And therefore, the Capital being at the epicenter of such a, a spell, it's the gloomiest of all the places. Uh, but the undead still try to live as if they, uh, you know, they still cling to the old ways and mm -hmm. try to just see these as unfortunate um, side effects of uh, having done the right thing. Of course, undead players won't start from here. They will actually start from a town called Gloomset. Before you switch over to that, can I ask? Yes. That pillar with the light, it's like I'm getting Big Ben vibes and then I'm getting like the Eye of Sauron vibes. And I'm getting all sorts of cool vibes. So just hearing about the, the cool logic and, and lore and world building behind the, the Griffin Monument, can you, is there anything cool to share about this thing? What, what is it? There I, will I, be. I need <laughs> to know. So suffice to say that uh, uh, the undead, uh, <laughs> they since they no longer are much, you know, people of faith, they have embraced a bit more technology and progress. So. Uh, in the real world, they would be closer to Illuminism, to the Enlightenment uh, movement and uh, human uh, humanism. Um, unfortunately, this is also including like if Enlightenment actually had necromantic magic at play, so a quite different uh, version of it. And of course, as such, their technology is not exactly as medieval as the other humans. Uh, uh, they they moved a bit slightly forward, let's say. They had to. They had to. Uh, this is also a way for them to proceed their activities. So, for instance, a magically powered uh, mechanical lighthouse could yeah. be a good solution for their uh, trading. 
for tra their trading habits in a very uh, clouded and shrouded landmass. That's let's leave it at that. Because oh, there's plenty. more about it. There's also that bell tower in the background. I'm not going to say <laughs> too much about it. Uh, yes, a necromantic piltover. It's uh, a very good uh, way to explain it. Uh, but uh, a piltover from Arcane, uh, as depicted in Arcane, is one of our references, actually. Good catch. Uh, um, so let's uh, move on to our starting town for the undead, Gloom Set. So Ooh, it's, it's gloomy. It's gloomy. Okay, well, uh, well, why? <laughs> How am I supposed to pick a desktop wallpaper for this month now? This is uh, uh, gonna be, um, well, it's gonna be a challenge because we still have a lot more to show to <laughs> today. <laughs> so, I think you need more screens, that's the solution. <laughs> um, or you can do a slideshow. Uh, so, um, well, let, let, let me talk quickly about Gloom Set. So, um, the, starting, the starting town of the Undead, uh, it's uh, mostly focused about uh, research of uh, how to combine uh, magic and uh, technology pretty much and what they're doing uh, what they're doing uh, is trying to to ease the new undead into their new unlife uh, there are a few uh, there are a few things actually going on here uh, first of all not always the ritual of undeath uh, goes as planned so sometimes you have um, you know the soul doesn't really come back uh, entirely in one place and this can leave some issues. So uh, Gloomset also acts as, as a bit of an asylum to, you know, treat or either dispose mm -hmm. of the, you know, the ones that didn't make it. Uh, again, the undead are a very pragmatic race. Um, but yeah, uh, and this is the this is your first trial, getting back together in one place. Uh, can you say uh, a little bit about? the challenges that you, you think you might face, like portraying this in 3D when you are about to translate, where do you think will be like the hardest thing to nail down? What are the m biggest challenges? So the major, the major issue, of course, will be to nail down the lighting as we yeah. want it. Uh, Unity, unfortunately, doesn't do any favor. Doesn't help you on that. Oh, no, it doesn't help at all. It's an uphill battle with Unity. However, uh, and of course, uh, making sure that on mobile we, start, we still get the same vibrant yeah. lighting. Uh, this is our objective, of course. Uh, to get these uh, one to one, uh, you would need either uh, like the lumen technology, like it would be very difficult to get exactly one to one the same quality of an artwork. Yeah. Uh, however, we will do our best to get uh, as close as possible. Uh, there is a reason why we cannot just pre-paint the lighting and we will talk about it in a minute mm. uh, But let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that before you switch on to the next one I just uh, want to note uh, on the previous uh, image It was all cold colors, but here we have a little bit of warmth and, and light Which uh, I'm pretty sure is not just a random no thing. as you get uh, farther away from Beltaras the land is less and less withered and clouded mm. uh, Veltaras still is trying to use warm lighting to you know, uh, make the, the roads a bit more welcoming for their inhabitants, but the uh, suffocating shroud of the enchantment, you feel that. You will feel that. It's the opposite. Like if we were to draw a comparison, uh, uh, can we draw a comparison to Undercity? Can we? Yeah, why okay. not? If we're drawing a comparison to Undercity, Undercity is actually made in image of undeath, and it's a welcoming place for the undeath because it leans into the undeath. Yeah. Beltaras is a place that is leaning to the past glory and brightness that they were used to have uh, and is trying to cling to, to that past rather than embracing undeath altogether. Not all of the undeath, however, are this much into, you know, holding on to the past. Uh, there's actually sub-factions of undead and different schools of thought. Um, this actually will play also in the quest line. The undead will be very fun to play, actually, in my opinion. Because their quest line is not, let's destroy the humans. It's actually <laughs> some more nuance to that. Oh, you're because saying you're saying they have more motivation than need to eat brain? Yes, oh, wow. we completely scrapped that. Um, to make a, a comparison, there's going to be some more political stuff going on, a bit a la vampires, if you will. Yeah. Uh, because, of course, they are immortal. They have a lot uh, of time on their hands. And also, they are still grasping... Like they're coming to terms with what it means to be immortal. There's even some undeads that are not happy to, you know, have become immortal, but they realize too late they made a horrible mistake. So 
there's there a, a lot to a unpack lot there. of story there uh, and again our uh, writing team it's uh, churning out an insane amount of content I'm super happy with what they're writing. She's in the chat, so guys, if you like, ask her. <laughs> yes, please. A uh, shout out to Elena, and uh, like she's amazing. She's an amazing writer, and uh, I'm loving her work. Absolutely loving her work. Um, I would say we can, however, move on because we have some more stuff to show. Today, actually, there's a lot. A lot of stuff to there's show. There's a lot going on. Uh, we we for a minute we thought, oh my god, is this gonna be enough? That's like this is like six <laughs> streams in one today. Uh, so let's move on to some character stuff. Uh, today there's not going to be much about character, but it's going to be relevant stuff. It is important. So first of all, uh, capital cities won't defend themselves, will they? No. So let's no take way. a look at how the humans are planning out to equip their stalwart defendants. And here we can see a preview of our uh, guard armors Five for the capital tons. city. Yeah. Uh, this is still uh, an early concept so as you can see we're evaluating different types of um, you know different types of armors different designs and even we're even of course testing out different color palettes and understanding a bit better what what's we want your to favorite of these? i was gonna say chat as well chat could you show us with a number from Actually, one yes. through five which one uh, you vibe with the most because, I mean, the guys over there at the character and the 2D art department... Here is the art director, just tell him which yes. one you you want to be inside the game. They cooking. Okay, so a lot of three. One, three, three, five, three, I'm saying, five. personally, I like one the best for some reason. <laughs> one, five. Okay, so I think it's almost the <laughs> least... Like, the least voted, the I think, is, is two. No, the least voted is, I believe, is four. I haven't seen, four, like, yes. four anywhere. Yes, yes. Like, but three... I think one, yes, two, three, like... four, five. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it helped us a lot. So you will be happy to know that we're actually meshing up a bit of these designs. Uh, we're taking most of the armor from one in the current iteration. It's not final, but yeah. Uh, and uh, the helmet is for uh, from uh, number three. And we're also taking uh, the gorget from number two. So we're combining a bit of the elements. Um, but yeah, the idea is that this this was made also with the idea to remind a bit of Minas Tirith a bit, you know, just mm -hmm. like uh, the guys of the tower, just <laughs> to get some of um, of that, you know, Gondorian drip going yeah. on. Uh, um, so let's move on to the big let's one move. for the characters. Ooh, we spoke shoot. about, uh, uh, yeah, we spoke about, da -da 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 I promised <laughs> that we would announce a new race and show a new race. Uh, so let's, let's wait, let's, okay. Before we unveil, we are going to show you a new race, which uh, is going to be uh, that one. Can you guys like uh, tell us in the in the comments? Yeah, can you guess? Can you guess what what race are we gonna see now? Like, is it going to be yeah, let's human, see if they are perceptive. undead, uh, elf, grontar, or what is it? We left a few breadcrumbs. Yeah, we did leave. So, leave, some uh, so we have elves, shark people, or <laughs> the shark, I wish we had shark people, not yet. Shark we people, already so. have actually, the bear people, so actually we could. We would have, have a shark mount. Did we not show a shark mount, like a, a land shark, <laughs> a walking one, like last stream? The dummy mummy is back, by the way. Uh, by the way, guys, <laughs> no, I'm championing. I'm championing the the dummy mummy, by the way, because it's beautiful. It's just poetry, poetry for me. Um, uh, well, I would say. Uh, we have a winner. The, somebody, the half somebody. horse, half man is going to be interesting. <laughs> so the, and that's it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we, it's actually going to be the elves. Yeah. The, elves, the last of the three races of Iron Guard, because this is an Iron Guard themed stream. So let's uh, look at how we reworked the elves. So some of you may notice they have changed a bit from the last time uh, the elves were visible and testable yeah. in the game. Let us go over why. Of course. Uh, so, the elves are no longer just uh, uh, the moon elves for one mm. reason, is that the moon elves have been done quite a while, quite a bit, and uh, uh, the high elves as well. It's, uh, it was a bit done... Um, uh, male no penis. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, um, no, uh, they, they have their proper genitalia. We didn't bother adding the bulge to the concept because it's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, you know, not that important detail. It's not an important detail. Uh, it's not Conan Exile <laughs> where you get like <laughs> the dangle physics. Uh, but it doesn't like, give you like I'm, plus I'm, five strength. You I'm know? ashamed to say that that's like one of my best friends who 
who said that? <laughs> well, thank you for your contribution. Thank you, Chuen. Thank um, you, friend. But uh, so the Sun Elves are, uh, as you may have known, they are descendants. They share a common heritage f with the Infernal Demons. But after the last uh, demonic war, and it was quite a while before, they decided to renounce their hunger for souls and uh, to renounce their original uh, purpose to uh, call upon different godly power and trying to become uh, something more, to elevate themselves outside of their original yeah. intended purpose. And that's why they have become the Sun Elf, because the, the, um, the, god, uh, the god of the sun actually answered the prayers uh, and decided to grant them the power to sustain themselves of the sunlight, of the, of the holy fire of the sun. And you can see this uh, um, in the concept art. This is reflected by the fact their skin is like ash and they're, um, where they used to have, you know, the chitinous membrane of mm -hmm. the infernal demons, they have now uh, these uh, marks and these are the marks of power where their blood, their hot, their um, molt, almost molten, hot molten blood uh, runs and uh, absorbs the power of the sun. Uh, we can see a bit more in detail, actually. Let's uh, before that, can yes. we ask the, the people to, to no tell us yeah. what they think about the new concept? What do you, how do you guys find this? Yes. Let us know. Um, they're while, very alien. While, they while, while they're answering, I just want to point out, it's an amazing, like, depth that was given to the undead. And that was, like, the point that stuck mm -hmm. with me the most from, from the last uh, reveal is just, like, Taking it from like the default, like white, uh, dead, zombie, eated brain, drink blood type thing to like the this more renaissance type quest for knowledge, self-exploration, um, coming to terms with your mortality slash immortality. Like that was amazing. And it just, in my eyes, it elevated the race so much. Now I'm seeing a very similar amount of thought and depth has been given to the elven race as well so do you think uh, the team are you confident that the team is going to be able to maintain this level of uniqueness across all the other races as well because what you've done with the undead and now you've shown that you're doing this with the elves as well uh, i think uh, we're starting to expect that from all the races well we are uh, committed to do that and we will keep iterating until we have done that to all the race okay <laughs> to be honest a lot of the races already have gone under the on, yeah. under wraps a massive overhaul. Uh, not only when it comes to anatomy, but also when it comes about understanding their um, uh, how to say uh, when it comes to um, characterization. As we said before, the first uh, the first point was to not have objectively good guys and objectively bad guys, and there's gonna be a common theme. Uh, this word is a word that, of course, as many fantasy words, has suffered and is shattered. So that means that every race is uh, kind of licking their wounds and trying to understand what's their purpose and where to go from there. And this is going to be a common theme. But even like the humans are on their last legs, the mm -hmm. undead are trying to understand the meaning of immortality uh, and what it means to be actually human. Like, are they still human in their eyes? And the elves are trying to transcend their original purpose, why they were made to consume souls how to you know cleanse themselves of that purpose and forge their own path and uh, i can tell you in advance that uh, by knowing with the power of being a director and knowing <laughs> what is cooking uh, i can tell you that uh, um, let's say the storyline of the elves uh, is going to revolve a, lo a lot around that a, lo a lot around you know the elves trying to understand what's their direction and purpose in the world because they are an oddity they shouldn't exist yeah we have, by the way, several very good questions yes. inside inside our stream, and I will just throw several of them probably out of order, uh, very very quick. Is it going to be only that co uh, co uh, core skin, or you're planning several different? Uh, options no, there are for a few. Skin? There are a few. Uh, there, not only there are a few uh, different variations, okay. but we also have. Uh, we actually had to trim it down because we with the with the sun theme. Oh, okay. We came up with so many sub races; it was insane. Absolutely. Saying, saying the sun, this is the next question uh, I have seen in the uh, in the chat. Why the female doesn't have this sun symbol uh, in on top of her forehead? I think this is just uh, an oversight from the concept. They will both have both genders will have this, and this is actually something that uh, appears and lights up when they cast uh, spells. So um, the idea. Of course, again, mm -hmm. 
depending also the technical requirements. Mm -hmm. But our idea is to make the elves uh, light up not their symbol uh, and also to have their markings uh, line, um, you know, burn brighter yeah. when they're casting spells. Absolutely. And uh, the last question on, on that topic is when will the graphic update come to test? Can we just uh, a little bit explain uh, the process of like how we uh, throw off the old uh, workflow with the maps in general and why right now we are uh, like delaying a bit the release of the uh, the zones in Iron Guard and the, yes. their, their test. Can you explain a bit absolutely, about that? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, first thing that is important uh, is that uh, um, the the core element was revamping that some of the technological aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we want to deliver the game, but to deliver the game, sometimes we need to take a step back and say, okay, how do we get around doing something? Mm -hmm. uh, this is also, of course, my mentality as player yeah. here when, uh, when handling these matters. But to me, until there is a technological uh, you know, demonstration of a technological benchmark of what we are doing, we should take a step back and make sure that we're proving this technology, mm -hmm. first of all, to ourselves. Otherwise, we end up with uh, Can you explain a, a little bit more about the complexity? Because recently you have made several tests of, yes. with the whole continent on a mobile. Yes. And you were pleasantly surprised in some areas. On others, you said, look, here is where we need to do more work. But this additionally creates a whole another layer of complexity. Can mm -hmm. you uh, explain a bit? If it was just a, a, a PC game, compared to cross-platform, what is the, the difference in complexity? So uh, we have very mm, you know, narrow limitations when it comes to tech. Uh, just to make it super, super high level, uh, the amount of stuff we can show on screen, the amount of uh, uh, memory we can give for, uh, I don't know, textures, mm -hmm. models, everything. Uh, anything that is animated is super heavy to render, so we need to be super careful with that. And on top of this, since we love difficulty because we are making like the most difficult, <laughs> technically game. difficult game ever, uh, we're also doing uh, world streaming, which for instance, it's a big... Sorry, uh, when you say world streaming, sorry to interrupt, but there is a lot of people uh, yes. which will probably not understand what exactly this means because this is strictly a technical... Can you explain a bit? I will oblige. Um, so when it comes to world streaming, the idea is to try to give an experience closer to what you would expect from World of mm -hmm. Warcraft. So you log in, and you can explore the continent as you prefer mm -hmm. uh, without any loading screen, like without having, you know, uh, end of region, and then uh, you, you know, you go there and it's a loading screen. This is our objective. Uh, it's on mobile, of course, it's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, so some people would say, but Genshin Impact did it. Yes, but they had different technology behind because the branches of Unity are not the same for every region, unfortunately. We are trying to replicate yes. something to create a technology that allows us. Um, and yeah, the idea is that all of the changes and most of the stalling around the content is to rework the technology so we actually have one huge streamed continent at a time. And uh, uh, rather than having individual zones with loading screens in the middle, that's uh, at least this is my objective, mm -hmm. to try to get there both on PC and mobile. Uh, without melting your graphic so cards. So basically what you're saying is you're spawned at the one point of the continent and you can run to, to yes. the other without any loading screen. Yes. Okay. The only loading screen, again, and this is uh, like, um, like if it's acceptable for World of Warcraft, we can, uh, yeah. we can get away with that. It will be loading screen between continents, most likely. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, considering that the continents are pretty meaty when it comes to sides, I would say that uh, it's still acceptable, and also you need to do a boat ride, so it's not going to be... World of Warcraft is only a PC game, so this yes. is completely different. Here you're fighting another battle on yes. top of that, while achieving their quality of uh, graphics or even on places better, and having this on a mobile, so this is a whole other layer Yes, of it's uh, very, very difficult. But, uh, uh, of course, we need to be more aggressive with optimization, much more, more aggressive. Absolutely. And one very important thing, which is we are always forgetting, but this is like our core value and we are not forgetting to, to say, to demonstrate, we are always focused on making the PC game. We want, when you uh, come inside Scars of Honor, to have the feeling that you are playing on a PC, you are playing a PC game, not a ported from mobile to, uh, uh, to PC. This is extremely important. And when you 
you have to make like cool graphics that are cool on PC and then take this and make it on a on a mobile you can imagine how complex is that absolutely um Regrettably, of course, we cannot push a PC on its limits to yeah. make super high fidelity on PC because otherwise we're making two games. Absolutely. Uh, that said, as and today we can show something about that. Let's go. We are doing a lot of work to make sure that our assets are, while they are optimized for PC uh, for mobile, they're also running pretty decent. Like they also should look nice mm -hmm. on PC. So I would say let's move on. Uh, well, we do have some more in-depth shots of the elves, uh, but that's. Uh, Ah, yeah, one, another, one tidbit that just came out here before we move on. And yes, we can do the... We we'll do, do another intermission after this shot, yeah. One, this is, this, to, uh, this looks, this sounds stupid, but one thing that we're also doing is to make sure that every underwear for every race actually matches the, the race. It's like, you may notice that even from the previous streams, there's no generic bra, generic uh, pants. Mm -hmm. Every race has uh, pants and, uh, and bra uh, or, 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 you know, the, all of the underwear is actually based on their cultural style and uh, uh, I know it's a stupid thing but uh, a good game is also you know it's it's on details that you build uh, you build the immersion oh know. that's good world building man every every race obviously will have their different uh, underwear and and I assume like there should be at least one race that is against the usage of underwear <laughs> there is like the barons might be just furry yes. and not have underwear I assume or maybe yes. the Gronthar would just, they, just bare butting it. They 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 don't. They're very hairy. <laughs> they don't need it. I would assume. Um, but yeah, it's it's generally like, and this is something we're gonna show it uh, uh, a bit further. But the details uh, are everywhere. Like the, the each culture is being uh, uh, each culture is being uh, finely crafted to make sure that. Uh, uh, of course, there's people that are just want to see the DPS and see the boss oh, yeah. go down. And get that dopamine uh, release from the loot but let's say that one day we want to make the rp only server and people just want to live and immerse themselves in the um in the in this world we should make the world as immersive as possible for details them details are important absolutely yeah speaking of that i can only i can only imagine when we get to like cuisine and food of the different races how crazy that will be yeah that's uh <laughs> i can't wait to talk. Whole other stream. <laughs> i can't wait to talk about food and cooking i just, I just might be hungry hello from germany yeah by the way can we uh pull up the full screen again real quick so so people can see our beautiful faces pull up our name tags again just uh uh take a little intermission give uh, abo some time to catch his breath again and uh in the meantime guys i will remind you once again here like a broken record that you can type in exclamation giveaway in chat and we are going to be uh doing our second drawing now so let us go ahead uh, mr puffy muffins and draw another one of the duo corns for one of our lucky viewers over here on twitch who has already used exclamation giveaway and uh if you guys are just tuning in do consider coming on to twitch and doing that also shout out to our our of wonderful course, friend the simpson uh, Hoover. Yeah, congratulations to Hoover Simpson. Hoover, uh, if you can contact Buffy Muffins uh, on, on uh, Twitch, he will uh, try to PM you, open your PMs. We will get in, in contact with you. Also, I just wanted to say uh, to shout out to Callum Upton, our, our wonderful friend who we've done content with. And to everyone Hello, else. Hello, Hey, Cal. And to everyone else who is uh, tuning in, thank you. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. And stay tuned in because we have two more Warrior Duo Corns to draw. And at the end of the stream, we're going to be drawing the King's Valiant. Good mount boy. or mount? How did we call it? King <laughs> Valiant. Mount, mount on the mound. <laughs> the good boy. The pupper. So, yeah, great stream. Nice seeing the work you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Calum. All right. So, uh, now we are going into... The next something 3D already. Yes, not ITG. only. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Let's uh, go. We spoke about the sun. We spoke about the mood. We spoke about many things. So I would say that's time to see them in action. As yes. I mentioned before, we don't have pre-painted pre lighting because the lighting in our game is going to be fully dynamic. Real time. Possibly not uh, melting again the mobile phones. But let's see where we get there. But uh, let's take a look at our day and night cycle. Oh, this is just beautiful, dude. This is the updated version yes. of the old uh, 
damn, so, I so is this the the actual like in-game 3D representation, like the earlier in-game, of course, representation yes. of that picture that we saw, that uh, the thing that I picked yes, for a wallpaper? Yes, this is Brave Stone Cliff. Uh, this is the starting town for the humans. Ah, by the way, I have to say this. Uh, we won't be doing uh, cities that on the wiki page are 7,000 people, but then they are free house. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, boo, uh, cool. You guys know what I'm talking this about. This looks like... Guys, do you remember how the game looked last year? Chat, can I see... Chat, chat, can I see who remembers what the game looked like a year ago? And are you seeing this? Like, is it just me or is this like an entirely different game? Like, guys... The Big up is, to Abo and, and the entire... The detail is even more uh, like uh, enjoying, but it is like so far, far view. And it is again like uh, amazing. If, if you... I, I have screenshots and videos from, from the entrance of this city and it's beautiful. Yeah, well... The... And this is not pre-rendered or anything. This is just no, like this is recorded. Real time. This yeah. is real time from the game. This is I'm not asking. I know, but like people are probably wondering. Yeah, this is probably some pre-rendered BS. No, so, bro. This is like real gold. time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, one thing important: the ships are a complete placeholders, right? So yes, the ships are from actually from the old version. Yes. Uh, They'll be we, gone. Eh? They'll be gone. Yes, we. They'll have, be better. Uh, we have reconcepted them already, yeah. and. Uh, um, by the way, did I ever tell you that I actually build wooden ships at home? So I'm very <laughs> much onto ships as well. Um, it will be very easy to build them in 3D then. By the way, this is the starting town of the human. So this is not like it's not the capital city. Yeah. And you will be able to find other cities that can have this scale. So uh, let me talk a bit about the cities. The layout of the city, of course, will be the different for every in um, for every settlement. But the idea is that you will have uh, different services spread out across the city. That we really want you to make you feel like you are in a real world, and mm. therefore the cities will be very vibrant, and you will have to use them a lot. So we want to avoid, you know, the situation where you have one square with uh, ten NPCs standing in the square, offering all of the services in a line, but you will have most likely, you know, the most common services in the same square. Uh, like for instance the tavern and the blacksmith but uh, profession trainer stuff like that it's gonna be scattered across the city because we want you to play across the city and use it uh, not only that uh, but uh, and again this is to be seen on mobile because we need to see what is technically feasible but this is our intention especially at least on pc to have some more random npcs just walking around the city just so, so it's not a ghost town with five people standing and staring at you can you, uh, with, with empty can you tell eyes. us a bit about uh, the cliffs and how did you handle this? Uh, yes. This yes. So, uh, ah, by the way, everything that you see in this screen, uh, it's uh, aside from, uh, I think, the base model of the cliff, we made it from scratch. Uh, so this means that the day-night cycle, we are making it specifically for this mm -hmm. game. <coughs> the volumetric clouds are made specifically for this game. And by the way, they run on mobile. I can't, I couldn't believe it myself. This, this was one of the great surprises. Yes, they run on mobile pretty decently. Uh, although we have quality levels, so we mm -hmm. will be able to disable the volumetric clouds. Um, so a lot of the stuff here, it's custom made specifically for this game and it's super optimized. Uh, the cliffs uh, inherit the same color of the ground and uh, of, the, of the stone from the uh, area palette. And uh, uh, pretty much this means that the same asset, if I drag them to Velteras, they will share the same color as the cliff of Velteras. Mm -hmm. And in this way we can actually, um, yeah, it uh, pretty much allows us to create interesting landscapes and also to govern the flow of the player because cliffs are a very useful tool. When we speak about the day and night cycle, can we say a little bit about uh, rain? Yes. Snow. Bef something be like before this. Before that, I was going to ask because you were talking about uh, the, exactly about the day and night cycle and, and the, the dynamic of the city. Is do stuff? Does have you considered stuff closing during the night, or is all the shops and stuff are going to be open twenty four seven? So for gameplay purposes, we should keep the services open because the day night cycle, as of now, is going to scale, be scaled one to one to the server time. Yes. So that means that if you're playing and the server time is past midnight, you don't get services. That may be a bit difficult. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But have we have you tied uh, the day and night cycle to any gameplay element? Because I don't think I've seen that a lot in, in other games. This and that is, would be pretty uh, cool. Uh, game design exploration, and we have several uh, discussions with it. 
uh, we have the ability. If we say so, we can do it because as uh, Abo already mentioned, this is uh, a, a server controlled. So basically when the server is controlling, you're in good hands. Yes. Nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, we do have context. So like in theory, yes. I'm just pitballing again. Don't take it as a promise for content. But in theory, we could make enemies spawn specifically oh, at night yeah. or specifically day. We could do that. We have a passive abilities that are actually boosting uh, boosting undeads at night. This was like the first iteration that where we wrote them. So basically, we have this ability, yet we haven't decided are we doing it or not. Exactly. So uh, imagine uh, have being a vampire hunter and uh, you know uh, having and, travel at and day. you see the sun. Oh no! Yes. So. Uh, for uh, speaking uh, uh, of the weather, can we say a little bit about rain, yes. snow, are we going to have such things in the game? So, uh, yes, uh, we already have, uh, so uh, the way the skybox works uh, is we, um, it's a completely dynamic uh, set of values mm -hmm. and uh, we can lerp them, sorry, interpolate them, we can blend them at uh, uh, when we want. Uh, with any color we want. This also, and we can also interpolate, um, interpolate the, the density of the clouds and whatnot, the fog, everything, even the reflection on the water. So this means uh, that if I want today to add a preset of the sky that is actually rain, uh, I can, and there is already, there are presets mm -hmm. for the rain. We have made the VFX for the weather effects and each region will have its own weather table. So that means that the desert won't have snow, but okay. you can have uh, very rainy regions where there's like a 70% chance of raining all the time. Makes sense. Um, it's fully dynamic. And the cool thing is that uh, it's uh, the same system we would use for day and night cycle. It's the same system that we use for weather. We don't need to write something custom on top of it. Okay. So we have something uh, very important as next yes. thing to, uh, to see, to hear. Yes. <laughs> so as you, you now have seen the day night cycle, you have seen Bravestone Cliff, but let's hear yeah. Bravestone Cliff. Let's hear uh, the music and the sounds of Bravestone Cliff because, of course, uh, and anyone that has played literally any RPG ever will agree with me, the music really... It's half of the... Is, it would even say 60% of the feel, like when yeah. you listen to the music and the ambient. So let's take a look at our first ambient. And, and let's, let's shout out before that. Let's shout out our amazing, our amazing audio team. Who oh yes, they haven't had, uh, they haven't been in the spotlight uh, as much as uh, we would have liked. We've uh, been focusing on gameplay when we had Alex over. Uh, we've been focusing on art today with you, and I'm really glad to to have them on the spotlight. So we'll kind of uh, shut up for a little bit. We'll mute ourselves, and we will let you. Uh, yes, hear enjoy. Let's some, some sounds, then we'll comment on them and uh, then we'll listen to some more. While we're listening, let us know what you, you guys think. Yeah. All right, and have a nice listen. That sounded amazing, dude. Props, props to who composed that music team? Constantine. Kostya, respect, big respect, Kostya for that. That just chat. Did you enjoy that? Literal shivers. Oh my goodness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Nice. What do? You... Let's say okay. We we watched, We heard the the day theme, but not everyone is gonna go around uh, the ta the the Bravestone Cliff at day. Uh, this is one thing that is <coughs> very important. <coughs> oh, well, I could use some more water. No, that's enough. Um, 
but yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens uh, when the sun goes down, and let's see. Let's enjoy together another piece, if you guys don't mind. Okay. Let's go for the next one. We'll do another, we'll do a break now and a drawing. Yes. Uh, should we answer the, uh, should we answer to the comments? Because the, the don't go into the forest alone at night uh, could be... Will the music adapt change when you are battling? Which is uh, are, we, are we live? I, yeah, good. We're muted. Right. Okay, yeah. So uh, we're, we were just looking at, at what you guys were saying in chat. Uh, will the music adapt change when you're battling? Yeah, that's a good one. I would actually like to do so. Uh, yeah. uh, it's uh, uh, something that in MMOs, I think the only Final Fantasy XIV has done, that you actually get the battle music when you're fighting groups of enemies. Uh, I generally really like the idea. Because Absolutely. It's, uh, especially because we can combine... So, looking at this, we can also combine it uh, with different vibes. Uh, and, um, for instance, here we would work very well with some folk vibes, some folk uh, uh, guitar strums, uh, uh, some light beat uh, and drums. So this is definitely something that we would like to look into. Um, Otherwise, it would be it, odd. Imagine like a calm, uh, the calm music on the starting zone, and then yeah. you get invaded by infernal demons, and it stays the same. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I've seen it done. But it needs to be done with finesse and very well because I've seen the the, the other side of the coin, where, for example, you are traversing some land, chill music, and then suddenly the music abruptly changes and you still haven't seen the enemy. Like, okay, there he comes. He's just right around the corner because I can already hear the music changing. Or even worse yet, you have an enemy for some reason glitched underneath the floor and then the music goes all dynamic and there's nothing there and you're like, hmm. Yeah. It's like there's the, probably an enemy stuck underneath the floor, right? The, the crab in Skyrim, that the music starts but you have no idea what the guy is. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is something we're still exploring. So again, yeah. no, no yeah. promises. But if, if given my, given the chance, I would definitely do that. And the idea of tuning it to the intensity could also be very cool. Most likely, we're going to probably have different intensity based on the difficulty of the encounter. So if there's elite enemies or uh, a yeah. roaming enemy, etc., etc. Let's see. This is something explorable in, yes. in future. And about being repetitive, last comments, and then I promise uh, we move on to the next hey, mount. I'm not rushing. I love these streams. Um, <laughs> but uh, about repetitive, yes. And this is part of the effort. So the tracks that you're hearing now are actually four minutes long, and they have three variations per zone. The idea is that by having the correct tempo and making sure that the music is not too fast paced or has some instrumental, uh, let's say, voids, it should be a bit easier to mask the repetition and don't make it too, uh, you know, if it goes the same, of course, uh, uh, note movement all the time, it's, it gets tire tiresome. So the music, we are working uh, with uh, this in mind. So this is a very good point, but yes. That's something that we can address to an extent. Of course, we can't make 100 battle tracks, but we can also address it. And also, it will depend on the area, most yeah. likely. So, unless you're spending 600 hours in Bravestone, please, uh, uh, I mean, sure, <laughs> that gets repetitive, but... Honestly, though, personally, from my experience talking, I think it, it, it really comes down to the quality of the, of, the, of the track itself because, you know, there's timeless, timeless OSTs. Like, I could never get sick of listening to some of those. Like, you know, we get on a game of Heroes of Might and Magic, man. I can listen to that theme for, like, 
my entire life and I can never get sick of it. It's just, it comes down to quality. And from what I've been hearing today, yeah. our quality is really good. And our, our, our artists are so talented. Our musicians and our composers are just so, yeah, so talented. Absolutely. So I doubt it's going to get like annoyingly repetitive unless, as, as I was said, someone spent like thousands of hours in one exact room. So yeah, before we get on to the next, because we have a couple more pieces to listen to, right? Uh, let's do another quick uh, uh, drawing for another uh, Warriors duo corn because I think uh, we have uh, two more of those on our hands and uh, and then the big one and yeah let's uh, let's start so guys again reminder uh, on Twitch exclamation point giveaway to enter the drawing you will be eligible for one so the ones that already want to do a corn are not going to be re uh, re uh, drawn so yeah I'm going to give you like ten seconds. <laughs> For, for those of you who have we just We already in. have the, the... You see that? Maurice Zimmorten, if I'm pronouncing oh, it Oh, they, they already did. Okay. He's already oh, okay. on. Okay. Uh, congratulations, Morris. Morris. Yeah. And and Chun says some really good OSTs. Yeah. Totally agree with those that you listed, brother. Yes. Those really good ones. So, congratulations to our third winner of the Duo Corn. Again, instructions are you will get PM'd by Puffy Muffins. Please enable your... Uh, whispers your private messages on Twitch so he can message you. If not, you can always contact us after the stream. We'll get it set up, straightened out. So yeah, congratulations. That was the third Warriors Duo Corn that we gave away. One so more to go, one and then more, the big and one. And then the good boy, the doggo, is gonna uh, find its uh, its uh, owner. The hound mount. The hound mount. Okay, so uh, let's do another one. What are we gonna listen now? What's gonna be? Someone the... actually commented about asking uh, for uh, race themes. Mm -hmm. uh, a good way to showcase a race theme is in their context, and of course, you won't be spending all of your time in the wilds. You will be spending a lot of time uh, also in the towns. Yeah. For this reason, for this reason, and also because we say that we want the players to enjoy the towns, we have decided that the towns should have their own music set. So let's, without further ado, let's hear the Human Town music. All right. So, well, guys, did you like it? Let us know. Epic. Nice. Nice. Okay. Nice. nice. Some nice, of nice. the most attentive listeners may have also recognized the melody uh, because uh, it's not the first time. Um, <coughs> uh, so, yeah, that's uh, something that uh, may, someone may recognize from a previous uh, from a previous song, and uh, this is the human theme in a yeah. nutshell. The theming sounds original and not a copy paste like the others, a mix of a silver moon and elven forest. So people like it. Yeah, I just want to uh, uh, say a, a few words on, on that because nowadays it's really easy to leverage AI, <clears throat> some really advanced engines that come with like amazing, amazing, almost photorealistic lighting and effects, uh, 3D scans mm. of environments, assets from stores. So. It's so easy for like a couple of people to just slap together a bunch of assets that they've bought, uh, put it in a very, very advanced engine, and AI some stuff, but it's AI some music. It's soulless, but uh, if you present it well in a trailer... It looks like an Italian town, they say. <laughs> Why, yeah. I wonder. Gee, I like. I, I wonder if uh, there's any influence of someone's architectonical and artistic background. Why it, uh. does it look like Italian? <laughs> And uh, it's it's so easy to like kind of bait people with like a really short teaser trailer of something that looks like wow wow wow, but it's not it's not custom. Here, guys, th these guys aren't taking shortcuts. Like all the assets you see here, all the music, all the concept art, it goes through all the iterations. It's not robotic. It's not pre-bought. It's not pre-baked. It's not. It's none of that. It's just coming from the soul uh, of of all these amazing creators. So that's something that uh, I really hope you guys understand and, and you appreciate because 
it really is we're we not taking no, shortcuts no we're taking shortcuts we are not making our multiplayer solution out of a game engine and trying to say that this is a multiplayer solution we did it from scratch and these we buildings are not pre-bought from, assets from yes. like a storefront and, yeah. and the music is not ai generated none of this is a shortcut like all of this is from the soul and and all of this is coordinated and all of this as we said goes through like 8 10 20 iterations before you see it so what you see is like 10 percent of all the work that goes in but we have more we have one more uh, of course, as we have shown you the, well, we have let you listen to the day and night music of Bravestone Cliff, uh, uh, which was a very short uh, selection, let's say. Um, let's go with the night theme for uh, the town. I can't wait, dude, I can't wait to play this. Get this on Spotify, sub, this is a programming music. <laughs> this, yeah. is how we, we, this is how we develop here in the... We're most likely going to have the OST at some point. Guys, should we... I think we already do, by the way. Yeah, we will sure. like have the official soundtrack. Sh should we, guys, should we do one of those YouTube videos that it's like 10 hours of Scars of Honor chill music to relax and do, do homework to, you know, those ones? We should, we should, by the way. Why yes. not? This is very nice. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Chuin. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank, thanks to all of you guys who are appreciating this. So, since... Uh, shall we proceed? Absolutely. Why not? Uh, we all have right. two more. Should we do one more drawing? And then? Because uh, Yes, we're let's kind of... do one more drawing because yeah, we're almost let's done. Do one more. All right, Mr. Puffy Muffins, I'm not going to go on like a broken record. If you're here, you probably already know what you need to do. You probably already know how to contact Mr. Puffy Muffins. So, let's, without further ado, do the drawing of the what is it? Is the fourth the now? Four, the fourth, the one. final uh, warriors duo corn. Let's see. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, and FR Granola Kun. Granola Kun from France. I would congrats, think. congrats, 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 Granola Kun. Bien joué. And uh, you could uh, contact Puffy Muffins or the official Scars of Honor account on Twitch via PM. They will try to PM you if your PMs are not closed. But still, guys, stay with us because the big boy is coming at you at the end of this stream. So the big prize is yet to be given. Don't, King's Valiant don't go away. Hound. By the way, uh, how exclusive is the Valiant Hound? Is it going to be hard to get in game or have you not decided yet? It's going to be absolutely unobtainable. So, better watch our streams. Oh my goodness. The good boy is very, very rare. It's going to be very prestigious. 20 years from now, when the game is still thriving, people are going to be like, where did you get that? And I you're watched going to be the like, stream. Bro, I watched <laughs> the stream 20 years ago. <laughs> amazing, amazing. All right. So, uh, let's get back to our final pieces of content over here, I think, that, that, that uh, yes. I was By the way, there's, for there's a question about the graphics here. I wanted to answer that. So, uh, some of the screenshots are simply um, beauty shots. So, we just try to find the best angle where the light hits the things just right. Of course, when doing the screenshot, you don't, you don't just take, you know, a random angle. But it's actually exactly the same stuff that uh, we're showing in 3D right now. So, when you see this, like... Of course, the concept art is going to be much more, uh, you know, uh, detailed with brush strokes. But the, the, what you're seeing right now, what you've been seeing so far, it's a pretty decent representation of the quality that we're going for. Yeah, but it's not final. This is no, no, no. To we need said. to, of course, uh, finish polishing. Uh, but uh, since some of you are concerned about it, let's say that we also need to strike a good balance between good graphics yes. on PC and, and uh, playable on mobile. Uh, so. We can't make it like, you know, Overwatch level of graphics on PC and then on mobile it looks like uh, a game from 1992. Yeah. So we're trying to also keep some consistency. That means that we want to be... Uh, and of course, there's Unity that is not doing any <laughs> and any help. Not helping a lot. Uh, and just to, 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 to 
reiterate on that, there's, uh, there's three very distinct uh, uh, ways to do that. And uh, fidelity, that's where our hands, uh, from what I hear, are most tied. But then with the art style and, and with, the, with, with the clarity itself, like you can do so much more with less. And I've just seen that because after this last iteration of the graphics and the visuals, I mean, it just looks so much cleaner. Some, some surfaces might look flatter and just not as, as, uh, as detailed in terms of fidelity, but in terms of art style, they just look so much more inviting. So guys, it's not always about fidelity, it's about art style. And Abo and, and the entire graphical team just make a showcase and make a really good case for that because I think there's no doubt in anyone watching this that this looks so much better than it used to. Yeah. Cool. Well, yes, we need yeah. some... Uh... Improvement, but yeah, uh, we're gonna improve on this. We're gonna polish these graphics, etc. Of course, uh, uh, it's not gonna be triple A experience in terms mm. of, of uh, visual fidelity, but this is literally the first test we did. Like, this is uh, what we're seeing right now is the first iteration that we said, you know what, this looks close enough, so we can show this mm. one. Uh, but yes, we will keep going. Uh, speaking of which. Mm -hmm. In order to make a city, you need architecture. So we wanted to uh, show you a selection of human architecture because Let's, this this is the close detail that I was yes. talking about. Let's look about a bit more in close. Let's see some detailed renders of uh, uh, the human architecture. Uh, of course, this is a process that we're doing for every race. So every yeah. race will have a set of buildings that we're going to use across different zones. Let's go ahead without further ado. So we can see here the human barracks. Um, we're taking an approach not really unlike what uh, early World of Warcraft did. So we're creating a set of buildings that could even, uh, you know, uh, make sense in, uh, let's say, in a strategy game. Mm -hmm. But then we use these uh, strategically, if mm -hmm. unintended, uh, across the world. And uh, can we shout out the amazing artists on our end who do, who are responsible uh, for this? Our environment team, it's uh, insane. By the way, this that you're seeing here, it's actually super low poly and runs on mobile. Just to say, uh, yes, the lighting here, it's of course, it's a uh, uh, like the, the lighting here is from the rendering, so it's a bit more detailed. But all of the normal maps, the, all of all of the detailed architectonic columns, etc. This is actually super low poly. We're using a lot of uh, texture and shader magic to make it look much, much more detailed Can than they actually are. Can you explain a bit uh, uh, what is low poly and high poly and what is uh, uh, actually the difference between, why are they important? Yes, uh, let's use the next building as an example. So you can see uh, the external border of the house, for instance, it's actually uh, just a bunch of cubes. There's no more mm -hmm. detail. Low poly means that the number of triangles that we have on the model of course, on mobile, in order not to, to melt the mobile phone, we need to keep the poly count very... As low as possible. Yeah, as low as possible. While keeping certain uh, graphical fidelity. Yes, the, 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 the quicker solution would be to lower a lot of the fidelity. But in doing so, we make a game that cannot be very appealing on yeah. PC. So this actually the result of... Uh, uh, oh, Knights and Merchants was a nice game. Um, it, it, it's, we, we spent two months just to understand how to... Uh, you know, best optimize uh, both assets. So, um, so this is very important. So this is very important. Uh, someone asking about housing. We're not gonna elaborate too much yet. <laughs> not yet. No, but that will be an entire it. stream by itself. Let's speak about. Let, let, we want to see house. Let's see human houses. Ooh. So this is also another thing that we're doing. We're trying to make. Uh, um, the building as composable as possible. We don't want to just spam like three houses, four houses around the road. We want them to feel like a breeding city. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, if we could have the fidelity of Baldur's Gate, it would be great. We cannot, but we can try to get the feeling of a city going on with the winding architecture, the houses stacked on top of each other. So this is something we also want to do. Um, May I be allowed yes. to questions, Mr. Rabo? Uh, are these made out of like building blocks or prefabs or whatever you call them? So can the level designers then rearrange these little yes. pieces so that it's not like the control C, control V, like the same house, but they can use like different the doors and the prefabs to just like make all sorts of different sprawling uh, cityscapes? Yes. Uh, so the idea is uh, uh, to avoid also a situation where we need to copy paste entire cities. Each house is uh, set as a single prefab slash model right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that uh, the level design team can combine them 
and have a unique layout for every uh, house, uh, for every town, sorry. And also, the seat, the, actually, the buildings have uh, some, of, uh, some terracing below them, so we can actually stack them on top of each other when it comes to uh, slopes, uh, cliffs and whatnot. The idea is if you want to make a very vertical city that just, you know, strewn uh, across a cliff, we can actually do that by using stairs and terraces as well. And uh, to answer a question, yes, some buildings will have interiors, of course they will. We're not going to make the city that you cannot, uh, uh, yeah. or, you know, visit uh, zero houses. That said, not every house will be uh, no explorable. No need to, actually. No need to, yeah, of course. But I have a second one. No, it's a, I, I might be a little bit too technical, but we have Abo on here, so I just want to make like a little uh, graphics uh, <laughs> uh, to, like, I don't know, explanation here for everyone. You said that uh, things are low poly. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I've, I know these technologies that are used to optimize that, which are like uh, normal maps and bump maps. And for those of you who don't know, I'll, I'll probably butcher the explanation, but it's like when you have the texture, which is the painting on top of the flat surface, then you have like another invisible layer uh, on top, another invisible uh, texture on top of it which is just like what a uh, cyan and blue like purple and blue and that just shows how it this, tells this the stacks, light stacks uh, it, it details makes, on top yeah. of a flat so it surface. makes it look like the dungeon here see how the dungeon is all 3d looking imagine if it was entirely flat it's not but if it was entirely flat and then the light would catch it in different ways so is this the technology you're using to make all these yes actually uh so you're telling me that these tiles on top of this building it's actually it flat part of the technology it's, it's not hard. only okay this yeah. is it's a combination of uh, using geometry in a very smart yeah. way yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and also using shape again the normal Several maps techniques. but yeah the normal map is doing a lot of heavy lifting like if you see the archways for instance this is the stable by the way that's mm. uh, where you can uh, attend uh, to your mounts. Oh, Shama Saddleback lives over there. That's, uh, that's the uh, Mythical Mounts Emporium building. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Not the one they have seen in like, the video, by the way. Yes, we kind of overhauled that. Uh, but you can see, like, some of the arches, the heavy lifting is done by the normal uh, they, they, uh, If you see the side of this uh, model, it's actually just a square. Yeah, exactly. That, that's no what I was thinking. It's is it is it actually flat? And the it's normal map. Flat. So the normal map is carrying yeah. all this weight, and this shadow that's falling, like t this tiny shadow yes. that's falling. It's not even 3D. It's just. This oh is my the solution goodness. we're using. Uh, of course, uh, if you're comparing it again to, I don't know, let's say Overwatch. Overwatch asset is gonna look low poly. It will uh, on PC, but this allows us to keep this level of quality on mobile. So. It's the best of both worlds. Uh, it we looks have a, great. It looks great. Before I'm so proud go, of you guys. Before we go to the next one, let's uh, remind once again the whole uh, the whole chat, guys. The big prize is coming. So uh, exclamation mark giveaway if you want to uh, win the big boy. End of the stream. Yes, uh, we have two uh, buildings left. Uh, let's quickly go. Well, let's quickly. Let's take a look at them a second. So this okay. is the uh, human tavern actually. This building will have interiors, so this building will actually have uh, a kitchen, will have the, the, terrace. The, the basement, the terrace will be actually explorable. Um, and uh, there's going to be some rooms in it as well uh, for all of those people that have done the, the naughty things in Goldshire. <laughs> yes, uh, you can do it again. The naughty room. Yes, the naughty rooms. Uh, and uh, one last thing, let's take a look at our town hall from Ooh. the humans uh, this is my actual personally fav favorite building uh, i just like it uh, because i love domes especially when they're made out of orange tiles and um, but yeah this is uh, uh, I, I just love it and as you can see uh, with the banners of the sacred order which by the way in game they actually float in the wind yes uh, actually one last thing here you see it's simplified, but in game I added a shader for procedural moss that gathers around the bricks. So this in game will actually have procedural moss and other details on the on the roofs and whatnot. To give it liveness. Yeah. So, to, to make so, it more unique feeling. And it would be growing in real time, like day after day. No. No. But it's gonna be a bit more detailed than what you see here. It's very clean, very bare. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty uh, much another another question. Yes, if, if there's um, uh, do, do these buildings uh, somehow interact with the weather effects? For example, if there's if it's snowing, would uh, yes. snow pile up on these? They, there will be snow coverage. If on the there's building. the it's if it's raining, will they become more shiny? The 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 bricks or something? The the the, the roofing tiles? 
Do they become shiny and rain? Uh, this is something, yeah, this is something that is doable. Uh, again, it's a matter of optimization. Uh, but yeah, uh, so uh, this is pretty much uh, uh, all there is. Uh, Someone says that this house looks way too modern for an MMORPG. What do you mean way too modern? We saw like the, the undead have like lighthouses with like light with actual electricity. No, but uh, so the main references for the human architecture are the Romanesque architecture for the early uh, 13th century. So we're looking at the Ravenna Cathedral, the San Ambrogio Church in Milan. This, this, kind, of, the, this kind of architecture of the early Christianity. And uh, actually, a bit more than uh, the 13th, a bit earlier than the 13th century, uh, with some Byzantine influence, uh, um, uh, with some Byzantine influences. Yes, the Rome, uh, the Rome, like the use of arches in a way um, that is very reminiscent to the Roman style, comes from the fact that of the Byzantine and Romanesque influences. So uh, you are pretty much on the money. It's not necessarily medieval, but it's a fantasy world. So we're going to use different yeah, times yeah. and different styles all across the world. We are we're trying to steer away from the generic two-door 1400s uh, uh, timbered wood house because it's been uh, done to death and back. So that's why we're trying to uh, go away a bit from that. But uh, I hope this answers your question. And uh, absolutely, we we I, I, as you can see, there's a lot of research behind. It. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we are done. We just have our relaxing background here, but we can probably move on directly on the giveaway. On the Q&A, let's do the questions and answers first. We have a few questions from the uh, forum thread. So let's go, get on to the Q&A uh, screen. Uh, and guys, again, as it says here underneath us, uh, feel free to shoot any and all questions for the team on our official channels. You can find those, of course. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Reddit. You can come to our Discord. But the best place to make sure your question is seen and read is uh, in the specific uh, question and answer submission threads before each stream. Puffy Muffins makes sure that those get uh, posted everywhere, so there's no way you won't find it. Out of the one that we had this month, we've shortlisted a few questions because last time Benny was like, come on, come on, guys. <laughs> so we, there's not that many this time. We tried to shortlist uh, uh, the ones that we really liked. So let's uh, get on to the first one. I'm going to read it out and... Uh, Whichever one of you fine okay. gentlemen decides to, to pick it up. So first one is Toto Nigolo 34 asks, how do you manage optimization for different types of hardware? I think Vinny can say a couple of words on that, maybe. Well, it is a complex uh, uh, like procedure that, that we go. Uh, I've already spoiled a bit that you have a different flow, for example, when you're making something for, uh, for PC and completely, not completely, but uh, a different flow when you're making something for uh, mobile end of the day you need to test on both platforms and make sure that things are uh, aligned and uh, they uh, do what they need to do on the respective uh, platform but going in details it is like a whole other stream where we can explain that yeah we will probably end up doing a, yeah. a technical stream where we go into like all of this uh it'll probably yeah. just be me and venny or maybe even me venny and one of the the more uh technical people but now we have abo here on the art side so let's get into the next one thank you toto for the uh for the question next one is by our good friend decibellum and he asks what is the current development status of battlegrounds Oof. This is something that is like an absolutely hot topic right now at the, at the studio. Uh, we are cooking something, something unbelievably good, yet we don't want to spoil anything uh, about it. But I, I, I said it, it is our main topic right now. So he, uh, very soon you hear something and you see something very cool. Okay, good. I see uh, right before that one from chat from my dear friend Chu, and he asks, why are we making on this game on mobile as well anyway? Like, It is something that is uh, extremely uh, like accessible, and we have always uh, heard that uh, MMORPGs need to introduce something new, they need to try something, uh, something new, and for us, uh, mobile platform is another huge amount of uh, uh, players which we can reach and therefore increase our online numbers and we as we all know an M a healthy MMORPG is a is only healthy when it has enough players 
and this is very bo boosting the the online numbers. And I think that those of us who are those of you guys who are in Twitch, you're very fortunate. You're most likely uh, first world country people with good internet connection, probably a laptop or a computer. But there's a lot of people who all they have is a phone. Uh, and there's just so, so, so many people. Like, we don't realize it oftentimes where we're in, in, our, in the comfort of our gaming PCs with our 4090 RDXs. But there's a lot of people who would love to be able to play a good quality game. They just don't have the hardware to and all they have is a phone. And nowadays, phones have become so much more accessible and so much faster, so so much more capable of, of like, it shouldn't be just for phone calls and video calls, yeah. I think, and for like Solitaire and Tetris. Uh, Phones are very well capable of delivering quality gameplay experiences. And as you all know, we disregard most phone games because it's usually just this pay-to-win garbage uh, and full of just microtransactions and, and, and stuff. So we're, we don't want to do that. We, we want to do something that, that gives the opportunity to, uh, to mobile players to, to enjoy something like actual cool proper gaming yeah. so I'm, I'm very vibe with that so the compromises and it's not even that many compromises that we have to make it's just more work that the team has to put in Absolutely. is definitely worth it so that's why that's why we're doing it can we go on to the next question I think this one is also from our great friend Disabellum he is also asking are we still going to get three new playable classes as mentioned in the roadmap by the time we get uh, the new public test in September yes that's the plan this is uh, what we are like focused uh, while working on extremely on re revisiting the whole combat in Scars of Honor and providing a meaningful and enjoyable uh, battleground experience, of course, you need to do it with uh, a decent uh, classes. So, we are going to provide three new classes, but which exactly we are going to unveil in future. Okay, and so that's coming up pretty sh soon as well. So, uh, let's get to the next one. Uh, next question is coming from our dear friend Cody Becker, who says, when are we going to see the first dungeon? Roughly around the end of the year. Beginning of next, end of this. Okay, so that's a pretty concrete answer. Pretty quick one. All right, let's add another one. Gronk on the forum is asking, I would like to know if there will be major and minor professions. Should I? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so uh, there's the division between minor and major profession was a bit arbitrary in the, to begin with. The way we want to handle profession is that they should be a bit more uh, entrenched with the gameplay experience. So at the end, they are all professions. They're all equally important and they will all uh, work together in tandem. So they're not in a vacuum. They're not just for fancies, let's say. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and lastly, we have another one from Gronk who asks, I know in the Beast Burst app we can get mounts. By the way, before I, what is the Beast Burst app for those of us? The who Beast don't know? Burst app is something that you can download like right now on your phone. You can have access to a daily loot box which grants you like free uh, uh, loot. You can get mounts, you can get supporter and honored uh, license. So it's definitely something th uh, that you want to download and, and have on your phone right now. So. Wait, are you, are, am I getting this correctly? If you just log into the app daily, you get yes. free stuff for the yes. game whenever it launches? The Beast Burst Dungeon. No, 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 right now. Right now. Right now. You can visit the Beast Burst uh, Dungeon through the Beast Burst app. It's available for iOS and Android. So it's basically a mistake to not have that. Absolutely. You're literally losing out daily on rewards Absolutely. if you don't have it. Guys, free rewards daily on the app. So if you're committed to playing the game and getting into, into our ecosystem, then it's... Uh, Definitely a no-brainer to get the app. And before we get to the one on the teleprompter, let me just finish Gronk's question. So he says, I know in the Beast Burst app we can get mounts. Would there be certain mounts with lower drop rates in the game or perhaps gained from certain completion or achievements? I think that's pretty obvious. Yes, absolutely. We have separated different prizes for the different uh, streams. For example, for the live streams, we have something that is unique. We have some things that go uh, on the shop, some things that go uh, inside uh, Beast Burst app. Some of them mix, some of them don't. But this is like ongoing decisions that we, that we make over the course of time. So be sure to be active everywhere so you don't miss some cool prizes. But there is one prize that you definitely want to get yeah. your hands on. And that is the one that's going to be getting drawn in about two minutes from right now. Let's go. Everyone, this is your last chance. This time, uh, Puffy, wait. 
Let's give a final two minutes before the okay. end of the stream. You can answer that question, by the way. Yeah, the, the shampoo one? Yes. Yes, uh, how do you uh, maintain your, your heavenly savior look? I generally just wash with whatever I put my hands on. <laughs> there was some bottles at the hotel, that's done. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> Guys, uh, if you don't know, we're, we're dudes. We're all dudes. We're gamers. We're like computer people. Like, if you don't know, girls have like this huge thing with different products. Me, I have one thing that I use for my hair, for my face, for my body, for my car, for my floor, for dishes, for feet, for like everything. I assume all the guys are like that, right? Right? Well, I have to go sometimes to the hairdresser, but uh, that's what I, <laughs> the barber won't understand my needs, unfortunately. Yeah, all right. So guys, last chance, enter in Twitch chat, exclamation giveaway. And within this next minute, our wonderful, wonderful community manager, Mr. Fluffy Muffins, will hit a magical button. And one of you, could you show the, the good doggo again right before we do that? Yes, let's, let's come back to the good quickly doggo. Quickly scroll to what is going to be given. Yeah, let's, uh, let's put that, uh, that screen up, guys. Let's Here show that beautiful doggo on oh, play, play this, play this. Yes. Oh, look at that. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? The King's Valiant Hound is a good boy. And guys, the King's Valiant Hound is going to our lucky winner, who is... The drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. And congratulations to... Aras BG. Oh, it's a fellow <laughs> Bulgarian. Aras BG, congratulations. You are the first person in the world to own a good doggo in Scars of Honor. Congratulations. The first dog. And it's going to be, you're going to be the only owner of that dog for some time until we figure out where yeah. it's going to go and who else is going to. Naguaseno. Someone <laughs> said that. <laughs> that means, no, it's not, it's not set up. The bot, you saw it, you saw it, you saw it from Nightbot. We do not have our own custom night bot, so it's definitely not a scam. He won it fair and square, so congratulations to him. Sir, contact us. Uh, we're going to try to contact you as well. Hopefully your PNs are not blocked. You can, you've can you enabled whispers in, uh, in Twitch. So yeah, well, that concludes our third monthly development live stream. And uh, it was an amazing pleasure again on behalf of the entire team here at Beast Burst. Uh, we're very, very thankful. We appreciate you guys so much. You guys uh, give yourself a pat on the back because you are a rare breed. Uh, most people get interested in games after they're available. You guys are here supporting us throughout this entire journey. Uh, we know, we know your patience runs thin. Our patience runs thin as well. We want to release this thing, but we're not going to release this thing unless Undercooked. it's... Yeah, we're, we're, we'd rather take our time and uh, give you guys something worth... Uh, but in, in, Instead of just making you wait in the dark, here we are. We've yeah. committed to doing these monthly streams. Till uh, next time. And even though sometimes we don't have that much to show because we're reworking. You saw how many things we reworked. You have no idea how much stuff went into the bin and wonderful people like Abo came onto the team and just started reworking stuff. So sometimes we'll have more to show. Sometimes we'll have less to show. But we will be keeping it, uh, keeping it here and we'll be keeping you guys updated. So we really hope you appreciate it. And we really hope uh, you're armed with uh, the patience that we need in order to get something good out. So thank you again. Thank you, thank Benny. You. Thank you. Thank everyone. you, Abel. And thank you to all of our viewers. We'll see you next time, next month. Cheers. See ya. <laughs>